place the Holy Week. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so good evening. Welcome to the Athena Soft, Skill, Soft and Research Skills uh, Development uh, course. Um, thank you to be with us. Let me also um, accept, you know, the people as they are coming. It's a great pleasure to have with us this week one of my of one of our colleagues in Hellenic Mediterranean University from the Social Work Department, uh, Dr. Cleo uh, Kutra, an ex excellent volleyball player, uh, but now nowadays an assistant professor in the Social Work Department. Few words about uh, Cleo. Apart, Cleo is a part. Is an academic staff of the social work department and an assistant professor. Her bachelor's degree uh, comes from the social work department of uh, Technological Education Institute of Crete. And then she continued her postgraduate uh, studies, a master's degree in public health from the Department of Medicine of the University of Crete, and a PhD in social medicine in the University of Crete, of Crete, Greece. Leo also is a very a precious member of our international relations office is very active regarding the HMU relations with the U.S. universities, in particular with the Rutgers in New Jersey, and not only not only Rutgers, but also Michigan, you know, and other uh, U.S. Uh, universities. Springfield. Uh, that uh, yes, Springfield. You will tell more, you know, um, and also is a part of the Athena International Relations Office. Uh, as a representative of the Hellenic Mediterranean University. So today, Cleo will discuss with us about resilient skills, so important nowadays. Actually, resilient skills are so important for everyone. And one of the, of the common things that I can think right now is like resilience started from the, from the professional sports. You know, so it has been started, you know, the application. This is your, from, this is your from NBA. You know, this is what we you know, I, I would like to believe from the National Basketball Association in order to support young players after um, injuries, how to come back from fallback, as I like to say. So Cleo, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the Athena European University, the Athena Soft and um, Research uh, Skills uh, Development course, here is Anna, one of the organizers. Um, so thank you very much. And the floor is yours for the next, I would say, you know, as, as much time as you want, as you wish, until seven. Great time. <laughs> I would like thank also you. to thank you all for the invitation. Uh, especially, I would like to thank uh, to thank uh, Professor Petridi uh, for his kind words and uh, the invitation. Also, um, he was he has already presented me more than uh, in, in a very detailed way. So I will not stay in presenting myself. I would like to start with the presentation, if it's possible, if you all agree, if we are all here. I see a lot of black boxes. Um, the truth is that uh, during the uh, presentation, I don't have the ability to see your faces, but I would like very much to see your smiling faces if it is possible and if it is okay for you, of course. So it's in your hand to open it. Open your cameras, please, if you would like, or otherwise, it's your choice. I will try to share my screen. Um, let's see. Λέω είσαι muted. Κατά λάθος πάτησε muted τον... Οπότε πρέπει να τα πεις από την αρχή. You should... You are muted. Λέω. Just uh, added my... I shared the screen and then the, it was muted by itself. I don't know how the machine do it. I have no idea. It's the first time that happened. I don't know. <laughs> Just try to share it again. I will try to do it. Yeah. Speak, speak as you are sharing now. Okay. Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, unfortunately, I cannot see you anyone. Just my presentation. Unfortunately. You are not missing something. But go. <laughs> Do not say that. So, hello, everyone. I will start today with an introduction to resilient skills. 
uh, this is a very uh, wide topic uh, with too many dimensions, with too, too much uh, of uh, terminology to uh, put in order. So I uh, will start uh, with Heraclitus. Uh, that said that uh, the only thing that is constant is change. That means that all of us at any time, uh, we have things that we have to, uh, to leave uh, beyond us. Uh, things uh, just stop existing in some way. And uh, we, have, um, uh, we, will, we will have to try to move um, beyond uh, those losses uh, because for a number of, uh, for a myriad of reasons, we can move from one place to another, we can lose our jobs, we can lose our health. Um, unfortunately, COVID uh, learned us a lot of, about uh, losing our health and uh, losing our um, networks. Uh, at the same time, we might lose our marriage or partners. Uh, the, our life is full of losses, of losses. Uh, so uh, if we lose, lose out uh, something important, a big plan collapses or we are rejected by someone, uh, another way to express this feeling of loss is the door uh, is being closed. And um, the doors are constantly open and closed. And it's a matter of focus of where we're going to stay. Are we going to stay to the closed doors for uh, um, a great uh, duration of time, or we will try to go on and open the, those doors and uh, experience uh, new, um, new challenges. However, we all say that at the end of one thing is always the beginning of something new, but it's not always the case for all of us. And, no, not, and uh, uh, not every one of us have the ability to move from one um, um, failure to uh, some uh, yeah, another uh, adventure. Uh, so I would like to I would like us if it is possible to work a small exercise about the doors closed and the doors open. The main goal of the of this task is to uh, aware participants uh, that the end of something is also the beginning of something new. Uh, but the, the most uh, important is uh, to support participants to become aware of what currently prevents them from adopting a more optimistic outlook uh, when doors are, are closed. And uh, as this uh, group is an open one, is an open group, and people come and go all the time, uh, we don't have, um, we don't share uh, safety and uh, and uh, great bounds among us. I would like you to. I would uh, suggest you to take a, 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 a to present the things that are no longer exist, and without, not to talk about very important or uh, things that they are going to hurt you. Uh, so, um, I would like to uh, to to call you to think about a time in your life when someone rejected you, or you missed out on something important when a big plan collapsed. Those are going to be uh, uh, the statements or the experience that you have to write as the door is closed. And then you can think about what happened after the doors were opened. How, how, what uh, would have never happened if the door didn't close? And write down these statements as uh, possible, as much as possible, in two um, categories. You can use uh, a dock or a seat or whatever to uh, write down your experiences uh, of that door when was that door was closed and experiences when that open that door opened and uh, you can take uh, almost uh, 10 minutes of uh, individually working uh, with this uh, uh, experiences of yours if you all agree to uh, to implement this uh, short exercise. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, very clear. So it will help us if you keep, you know, this transparency on the screen. Ah. Okay, okay. It's it's a great difficulty that, that I cannot hear, that I cannot see and hear you at all. <laughs> but you can stop sharing and um, start sharing again whenever you want. Nothing. Uh, we cannot do something with the device. The device has difficulties. <laughs> we have to work with these difficulties. So you have 10 minutes. It is OK for you all to work in a, in a doc, split it in two categories, and uh, write uh, your experiences uh, in door, uh, as the door was closed and uh, as the door was opened. Mm -hmm. 
And after 10 minutes, we could, uh, with the professor Petridis' help, we will split in small groups. To I'm ready. To, I'm ready to share. I'm ready to share this even now, when the door <laughs> was closed or and how how I was feeling when the the new door opened. But this happens <laughs> in a daily basis. I think this is like motivation. You know, this, this is yeah, I'm sure it raise the motivation of everyone. So we will start the time. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm starting the time now. It's 20 minutes past five. So we are going to have the first volunteer to share with us their experiences uh, in 10 minutes. I will keep the time and I will notify you. Okay. Six more minutes. Right. So I will suggest whoever is ready to share with us the, uh, the story in six minutes, raise your virtual hand uh, next to the reaction. Costa, in order to so uh, to also see them, I have to uh, stop sharing the screen. Also. Yeah, stop sharing the screen. Yes. In a while. Yeah, you can stop sharing the screen. Even now. And then here we are. And whoever would like to speak, please switch on your camera. So to be able the Clio to see you. There is a comment from Teya, an, 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 insin, an insignificant typo. Ah, okay, all right, all right. 
So we are going to collect, you know, this type of. Thank you for the uh, for mentioning this data. It will be corrected. I don't know. I would like. I would like in the middle time to ask Leo when it was the first time that you you practiced your resilience. Every day. This Every morning. Day. <laughs> Every day. But I think sports. Sports is like you know a very big school on this. That's true. That's true. That's why we are so hard workers. <laughs> We're never stopping. Depends. I mean, you know, not all the sports, or not all your teammates, they were hard workers, no? So a lot of talent has been missed because they were not hard workers or because they quit in the first, you know, difficult. Mm -hmm. The same happened with the students, no? This is the first thing that we yes. should teach our students. Like, in the first difficulty, they should try harder and harder and harder, or they should not feel disappointment you know after a failure failure is to learn failure you know a lot of people they say like failure is a chance to go ahead it's the first step to success this is not the case for everyone unfortunately yeah i think ah okay so i i believe that joanna pahi is ready but we have three more minutes am i right joanna you raised your hand because you're ready no yes yes i will try okay so i will try myself as well let me <laughs> <laughs> But as Leo has mentioned, I'm speaking because I'm recording. That's why, you know, in order to not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to leave the time without recording. And this happens, you know, every day, every day, with thinking or without thinking, you know, resilience is there. And resilience is, one, is a very good example, as Cleo will mention later on, that soft skills is not, you know, just one soft skill. When you are talking about the soft skill, you, you, are, you are talking about all the others at the same time. And this is the problem also, you know, we will discuss it later uh, because of our terminology. This, Everybody this, puts everything in resilience. This is the beauty of life as well, because you have plenty of space to get improved at the same time. So if they are finishing, I would like to propose us to split in small groups. I think it will be easier for them to split in small groups and discuss a little bit about their result, uh, their statements. So do you want me to create the breakout rooms? Yes, and I would like to show them that they reflect uh, on the or, okay. or, of a number of questions to discuss so among the groups. We are so I have to share the screen again. I'm going to create uh, eight breakout rooms. Uh, so five people uh, per breakout room. So I'm creating them and um, let me, but before I do this, let me make Clio a co-host in order Clio to be able to move from one room to another. Oh, that's great. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's a great possibility. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, At the same time, I have to give them um, the the questions to reflect i don't know how we're going to do all of those things at the same time yeah, can probably, you see the reflection yeah probably now we can take a screenshot of this of what you have just shown and Good then idea. we already have a uh, available Let's see okay if, if everybody it does that yeah each one of us we can take the screenshot this is a, a, a lot of questions. You can uh, use some of them to discuss in small groups and uh, be aware that, uh, that all the things that you're going to, uh, to share with the others, be careful because we are an open group. We don't share uh, trusted and uh, relationships and we are far away to drink a coffee after uh, someone uh, wants to talk more about those uh, feelings, hard feelings. So whenever you want, I can start the create. We I can start, you know, to create the breakout room. 
Whenever if you they, if everybody have taken the, the reflector on the following questions, yes, you can split them, please. Okay, so yes, I'm sending I'm sending the, the the picture over the messengers just in case someone missed it out. Excellent. And thank you so much thank also. You. Yeah, welcome. So it's already there. All okay. right. So I'm creating the rooms. You will receive an invitation. Join the room five. Join room three or whatever. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you can see, all right, join the room. What about all of you, Alexandra, Diana, Valeria? Cleo, you can join any room you wish. I joined the room that I was alone. That's why I leave the room. Alone? <laughs> yes, I was alone. That's why I came back. I can see that the people, you know, they are joining the rooms right now. I will join room eight just in order to check. No, go to room eight because it's Levi's on eight. I will go somewhere else. Uh, uh, I will go. Okay, I'm joining. Oh, hello. Uh, we can switch on our cameras right now and uh, our microphones in order to be able to discuss. Uh, are you with us, Olivia? Daddy. Yeah, I'm here. I just have really bad internet connection right now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, the camera was... Alexandra, Daris, and who is, who is the other one? Isidora. Uh, you can switch on your mic microphone, otherwise we cannot discuss. So I suspect that uh, you're listening, no? Daris? Hello. Uh, yes, yes, hello. Yes. Isidora? Let's go. And Alexandra? Alexandra? All right, so I don't know what is happening. Probably Alexandra does not have, uh, let me assign. Um, so let's uh, start. So Ioana, um, can you share with us the questions? Or do you uh, want me to share? I, I can, uh, I think. Uh, I have writing down, so it's difficult for me to share. All right. Um, so, uh, so let's, you know, start right, you yes. know, read the question and say your your point, and then, you know, in each question, each one of us can uh, share his his or her experience. No. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want. To, sorry for my English first. I want to speak about but, but something. It, it is much better than mine. So go ahead. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. It's fine. Thank you. I want to speak about something simple, but very, very important to me. When I was about to give my final exams for the university, my teacher and the school don't believe to me. Uh, that's, uh, I don't believe to me either. So I failed the exams. I feel angry, sad, disappointment. I feel sad, very sad for myself. And after that, my, my teacher rejected me and uh, she didn't want to take me again to give the exams for the second time. Uh, I don't give up the fight. I found someone who believe in me. I try harder. I win this personal fight for, for me. I take very good uh, uh, grades. Uh, and fr from this experience, I take a lot of lessons about the people, about myself, uh, about uh, life. Um, it's very important because I learned to fight for my dreams, despite who the others believe for me. I win the fight and from that day, I have met a lot of important people to the university, uh, out to um, adventures, uh, and I keep going to learn and that's for me. 
Excellent. So I will keep, you know, um, a co uh, I will keep something from your story. Thank you very much because you have described when the door was closed and what, what yes. happened in order the door to open. Uh, but it seems that for you in, in your story, in order the, the story to open, it happened because you met someone that he believed in you. So yes. somehow you were lucky that someone appeared and, you know, believed on you. Am I right? Yes, and, uh, and also I believe more to myself and I try harder. It's those two things together. Excellent, excellent. So I, I will share my, my story with you. And then, no, I, let, me, let me give the floor first to the, to the ladies because this is the... the Olivia, uh, I, I, do you want to share your story with us or do you want me to... Yes. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's okay, I can share. Uh, yeah, it was uh, really similar with me. Like when I was in high school, I was like really really a uh, bad student and all the teachers were like okay maybe you try something else I don't think you're ready for studying maybe you're just break up here and go for something else and uh, I was like okay maybe it's just okay I'm not good at mathematics or something but I believe that there is a, a lesson or something I can study I would be really great in so I somehow just <laughs> finished my high school I don't know how because I just was like okay um, they all think I will not get through it but I think I want to show them I will get it and then I started studying uh, after my high school and got a really really good degree and I've met some of my teachers later after I got my bachelor's degree and I've told them and they're like oh okay that's so surprising because we thought you were just like they didn't say dumb but that's what they are uh, the feeling they gave me through that time and uh, I was really proud at that moment and I think that's the moment where I showed them okay I don't need other people uh, to be successful where I really started to be really good at something I like and now I'm in my master's degree and it's yeah it's really good so I have good grades and I like what I do and I like my jobs and everything else so I think the lesson I've learned is that you sometimes the circumstances you're living in just not give you the chance to be as good as you want to be. So you have to change them to be the best version of yourself and surround yourself with people who are believing in you. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Olivia. You mentioned some of the key words, you and, um, and Ioana, uh, that I'm keeping is like your uh, network. You know, the people around, mm -hmm. the people you know, your friends. Yes your close people, the people that you are sharing your worries and you know, your thoughts mm. these are very important. And in resilience, one of the key tips in order to build your resilience is like your surroundings, you know, your, I mean, not surroundings, you know, as environmental surroundings, but your friends mm. and relatives and the people, uh, your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, what, whatever it is uh, around you, because with them, you are sharing your worries and these people, they can support you and can uh, increase and enhance your motivation to come back. This is very, yes. very important. In my case, you know, I'm coming. <clears throat> this, you know, uh, my first experience that, you know, I thought that, you know, I developed my self mechanism. In my case, it was not someone that appeared, but it was myself. It was when I was like, I was like a champion, like a... Uh, in basketball in the junior team and then I moved to a higher you know to a team with older kids and uh, even though that you know I was considering very talented and you know I have made you know I have believed myself and you know I was I, I will I will say somehow more selfish than the appropriate you know in the in the new team you know the coach was you know someone else and suddenly from a star I became you know like on the bench and at the beginning because of uh, the way that I was thinking and because I was not sharing, you know, this kind of my worries, I, go, I was not able to think. And I was thinking that this guy, the, the new coach does not like me. He likes someone else, even though that I'm a better player. And um, I was very selfish, angry and not able to think. But then, you know, in order to, I had two solutions. Eh? Like, first of all, like to quit. And second, you know, like to continue because I like basketball very much because this is something also that play is very important for resilience. It's like to to, to like what are you doing, eh? uh, to believe on what are you doing. Uh, I step I step back even though that I was not playing, and um, I try to I at that moment without realizing I have enhanced myself and the environmental awareness. What do I mean by this? 
I, I stepped back and I was watching the other players that they played and I tried to monitor what, you know, the coach liked from the players. So then I made a self-assessment uh, um, uh, of myself. What, do, what I don't have from the characteristic of players that, you know, mm -hmm. the new coach uh, wanted. So I sit down by myself, you know, I spend a lot of time on, on the court training by myself, you know, these weaknesses that I had in order to be among the players that the new coach liked. And from that moment that I was, my mind was open. I was sharing with other players, you know, my worries. And, you know, I have notified my weakness and I work on my weaknesses. You know, in three months, I was again, you know, as a starter. And this showed to me without realizing that uh, no one is against you. Mind reading, you know, is very bad for your resilience. Um, and I will say like self-awareness and environmental awareness, in my case, you know, the team and what the coach was looking from the team, you know, helped me to overcome and do not quit. And from that moment that happened to me when I was like 13, helped me my whole life. You know, even in my PhD, you know, I know the mechanism whenever I'm facing something, if I like what I'm doing, and usually I like what I'm doing, like, you know, working, commitment, uh, the people around me to share, you know, their opinions, and uh, that's it, you know, in order to build the, 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 the resilience. Nothing is impossible, as, you know, a very big firm has mentioned. It's just like commitment, work, awareness, uh, especially to know what you can do. And, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, the main feeling that we should have in order to have a resilience and be, and you know, be, and have this characterization is like to sleep every night and to, our target should be to become better, not the best, because sometimes, you know, you will never be the best. But if you are becoming better and better every day, I mean, this is like resilience as well. This is my experience, my first experience without realizing about resilience. Then after I was reading about resilience, I have realized, you know, what is happening every day and what has happened that period in, in the sport. Thank you. It's a very good example. Thank you. Uh, and, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daris, your experience? I don't know if you're... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank yes, you. I'm here, sorry. Um, so uh, my experience was uh, when I was younger uh, in mathematics, I uh, was... Uh, uh, I didn't like it uh, at all. And, uh, uh, and uh, some teachers also told me that uh, I had to change to uh, stop mathematics and uh, uh, be more in literature or something like that. And, uh, but I wanted to become an engineer and uh, that was the only problem. So I learned to uh, accept uh, help and uh, uh, stop, uh, stop uh, seeing mathematics uh, in a bad way or uh, something that would be only uh, for some people and, uh, and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what are the main, the key words that we are keeping regarding resilience? Uh, I, mm -hmm. Please. Maybe, oh. uh, maybe as you said, uh, open, be uh, open-minded. You know? Exactly. And uh, maybe accepting uh, exactly. all the people's uh, help. Excellent. And in order to do this, you need your friends. You need your network. You need the people, the people that I know. It's a very good movie. A Hollywood movie, but you know, very important. And um, yeah, I mean, self awareness to know yourself, know your weaknesses in order to fight them, in order to come back, and not the weaknesses to fall you back. This is my yeah, I totally agree. I don't know if Olivia or um, Ioana would like to have a last comment. Otherwise, we can leave the room and go back to the main room. No, we're All fine. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let's leave the room and go back to the main room. Thank you. Bye. Yes, they, they this meeting is being recorded. Okay, let me try to do the best they can actually. So yeah, yeah, everything is good. Okay, Costas, welcome. 
we cannot hear you. Because we are muted. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just we just finished our room. Okay. Uh, we but, will, um, we will. If you would like, you know, to close all the rooms and come back to the main room, it's up to you. Yes. That's why I joined. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Right. I will do it. I can do okay, it. Okay, I'm doing it myself. Okay. See you in the main room. See you. This meeting is being recorded. I hope that the rest of the people now, it will take some time for all of them to come back. Uh, they are coming back. Uh, we, in 45 seconds, we are going to have all of them here. It's nice because this is the first time that we are using the breakout rooms within this course. It's a difficult one. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Hi, uh, Nicoletta. Nicoletta is another colleague from the from our university. It's Nicol Nicoletta, my dear Nicoletta. Yeah, it's your colleague, no? Yes, system. my favorite one, not just a colleague. My favorite one. Thank you very much, Nicoletta, to be with us. Thank you. A pleasure for me. For the people who come back? Back from the breakout rooms in 11 seconds, I hope that all of them they come back to this room and they will not go for a coffee. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <they come> back. <laughs> We were having such a nice, uh, and then uh, Nicholas was stopped. <laughs> Nicholas ah, is I'm so sorry <laughs> for that. So sorry for that. Costas pressed me to break out the rooms and uh, come back to the join to the the big group again. But we can uh, we can uh, hear um, his. Uh, where are you? We can give him some time to express himself. Nicolaos? Yes. Yeah, Nikos, Nicolas Petrakis. Yes. 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 Uh, I was just saying that uh, uh, it is uh, very difficult to, um, to choose when you have to stop uh, trying something or uh, if you have to try up to the end. Mm -hmm. This was my my idea. Sometimes you have to be flexible and say, "Okay, I'm going to stop trying this. I'm going to try to do something else." Yes, that's true. That's true. This is also always a challenge when a decision to stop trying. So uh, I don't know. Um, have you learned something new, reflecting on the questions that you have? Uh, in the small groups? Did someone learn something new? In our case, we, we collected some keywords based on the stories that we have shared, but it's better, you know, Ioana to share this information with all of us and not me. Ioana, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, I keep a lot of uh, details of the stories and uh, I think the main uh, keys is that we need to believe ourselves, to be close to people who believe in us, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, whatever, and to don't give up to our, uh, to our dreams, uh, to keep fight for them. I don't remember if I forget something. So we, we summarize all our stories in some keywords. So it was like uh, self-awareness, environmental awareness, uh, friendship and network, uh, commitment in what we are doing, and uh, work, 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 like if we would like to overcome, you know, a challenge, because resilience is very much, we should demonstrate resilience when we have a challenge, when, when we are far away from our comfort zone, and when we have a target. This is, I will say that resilience will play an important role to come back. Um, uh, some other groups would like to state, uh, to reflect on the questions. Constantinos was very good, so what to say? <laughs> Choose, uh, share your uh, insights as well. Okay, we only discussed the first two questions, we didn't have more time, so we say that the door is closed sometimes from external factors and sometimes from internal factors. 
and uh, also when a door is open uh, is from both uh, from uh, uh, out of nowhere or after we have we work uh, hard to to open a new door and to see a new opportunity um that usually in this period we have mixed feelings uh, uh, of fear anxious uh, hope uh, or um, uh, and hope uh, sometimes it's hard to see a new door and uh, to try to open it so you have to believe in yourself uh, you have to also work with your social networks and um, i think yes uh, so i think this we discuss Nicoletta, you summarized everything congratulations so nice <laughs> thank you i would like to Is promote someone... also uh, george fuskitaki to tell us his story because he has demonstrated a lot of resilience i'm not going to describe you know, George, you know, please give us a clue. <laughs> no, uh, I told my story, Costas, uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had the elections in our department. Mm -hmm. So I decided to be a candidate for being the head of the department. But finally, my colleague, two of us were candidates, myself and Antonis. Antonis uh, was finally elected. But nevertheless, I, it was not very easy for me to admit it, okay? I wanted very much at that time to have the opportunity to be the head of the department. But to be honest, I don't regret uh, that. Of course, I don't regret that I was a candidate, okay? But after that, uh, there were also some positive things for not being head of the department. I had the opportunity to focus on other activities. I had the opportunity to have some more time with my family that I wouldn't have that opportunity uh, as uh, uh, being a, the head of the department. Uh, I quit from my medication from high blood pressure. <laughs> Obviously, I would have to increase the dose of my medication <laughs> as the head of the department. And I went into cycling. <laughs> and now I'm very happy that I'm fanatic with cycling, with road cycling. But uh, all I have to say is that it's not a shame to face a closed door. All we have to do is to take a deep breath, maneuver, change our route, set our new goals, and try for our new goals. Perfect. And also, you, so you know, based on the stories that I have heard, sorry, Cleo, uh, another thing that I have realized, you know, one of the most important things is like to be honest to yourself. I mean, in order to overcome something, you should be honest to yourself, you know, go a little bit far away and see the things, you know, from from the top. Do not let yourself, your, how can I say, your ego to 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 hide, you know, the the, 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 the true, the, the true and the, the reality. I think that this is also very important for resilience. To be honest, and uh, George, to your story, is there uh, are there people or groups or services that uh, have helped you uh, to open the doors in the past, or, or it was uh, your individually uh, effort? It was my own effort, but uh, I had also an experience as a PhD student. Uh, working with my professor on a very specific uh, issue related to the stability of dynamic systems. We were trying for more than a semester, six months on that issue. We couldn't find a solution, a solution that was okay with us. Uh, so I, I was very surprised when uh, my professor told me, George, okay, since we cannot find a solution on the stability of of our systems, we will leave it aside and try to deal with uh, something else. And I was really surprised, but he was right. He, he was able to see the closed door and he had the ability to decide to go for something else. Or again, from, my, from that period of my life, uh, I was, after being a PhD, PhD student for almost three years, uh, I was totally collapsed. 
I, I was trying to work and th this was impossible. I was a wreck. And then my professor uh, advised me, George, I know that you cannot work so well. So leave it for one month, go back to Crete. I was, uh, I was studying in, in Patras. Uh, go back to Crete and come back when you are ready and uh, you have enough rest. And that was very wise because, okay, I lost one month, but I gained one year at mm -hmm. the end. Perfect, perfect. So if you all go back, um, it is important to reflect and uh, see if there, are, uh, if there are other people or groups or services that have helped you to open the doors uh, that uh, they, they are closed in the past. And um, try to, uh, to clarify what they did to help you uh, and also um, uh, try to think about what you could do to help others uh, to overcome the uh, difficulties or vulnerabilities or adversity and uh, to support them to become resilient. This is a, this is a work that the, the students will work uh, as an assignment cost us. I don't want them to give them extra time now to think about um, uh, in a more detail, but it's a good way to think uh, of uh, other people and their relations because relations is a very is extremely important to resilience. The relations with other people or with the groups in the services that have helped us to open new doors uh, for the future. So I will, uh, if Leo, someone else would like to, Leo, it's uh, not share always someone story or experience whatever, we can give them a few minutes. George? Uh, yes. George is uh, raising yes. his hand. It's not, uh, Cleo, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Yes, it's not always that someone else help, helps us to, to see an open door. Sometimes we do it by, our, by ourselves. I will say one, another one example. We own a small hotel business here in Hania. Okay, it's something totally different from academics, but you will see my point. Uh, so for a long for a long period of time, for many many years, we were used to collaborate with uh, tour operators, and we had contracts on a guarantee base. This means that our occupation and uh, our occupancy was more or less guaranteed. We had some income for sure, but uh, gradually we started. We had to leave the tour operators and start to work with Booking.com, with Expedia, with online, uh, with the online booking system. This, believe me, was a it was a mess. We had to uh, build and uh, construct our own site, try to provide very good services because we had the reviews from our customers. We didn't have that reviewing system in the past. Okay, we were relying on the tour operator and the guarantee contract. So then I discussed with my sister and we decided George and Georgina, my sister is Georgina. We have to work, both of us, and go to the new age, to the new era that is online booking. We have to improve ourselves, to improve our facilities, our services, because things change all time. They change all time. Thank you. We will discuss this also later. Nicoletta? Um, I want to say some thoughts about uh, resilience. I don't know if it's the time. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Uh, resilience to me uh, has uh, to do a lot uh, with uh, the loss of our, uh, uh, um, the doors to close and open has to do a lot with uh, uh, our balance that we want to have in life and uh, uh, when some crisis happen then we lose this balance so there is a time that we have to have resilience and to see how we will face the situation uh, depending on the on the subjective uh, uh, feeling uh, people doesn't experience uh, this uh, door closing uh, in the same way uh, some people have a great resistance and some has less resistance. So my thought is that we don't have to expect all the people to develop uh, resilience uh, because uh, um, 
and avoid to give them help because this can lead to other situation. For example, I know, I know that the neoliberal system in social services depends a lot on this, uh, that all we should have a resilience, all we should help ourselves. And in this way, they avoid to give uh, uh, personal uh, ser social services and support to people. So, yes, I believe strongly that uh, we have to fight in our life uh, to uh, be resilient people, but at the same time, we don't, we don't have to criticize people who cannot have the same position, and uh, they, we should give, as, as a, a welfare state, I mean, and as a social networks, I mean, we have to give support because when people are in crisis, they really need support, some of them, or most of them. Nicoletta, thank you so much. We will discuss it also later. Thank you for your point. And Kostas, would you like also to add something? Or some no, no, I, 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 would, I would like to, I have two comments now. You know, the first comment, uh, not comment, you know, like, you know, I thought uh, what George has mentioned, because in my case, you know, I was, I was helping myself by by observing the others so when whenever you know i would like to do something and i can see that i cannot manage it you know with the way of thinking of my thinking i try to observe other people that you know they have done similar things like role models so i try to copy you know the good quality the the good you know ways of acting based on the others so i'm i'm, I'm doing this you know continuously uh, and also what nicoletta has mentioned about the um, the social aspect of the state, I think that, you know, this is very important. And this is under, you know, what Clio has mentioned, the networking, the people around and the people mm -hmm. around is the state as well. I mean, this is part of our life. Yes. This is what I mean. Yes. And I have prepared something in full with a uh, presentation. You will see it very clearly, uh, the role of the state and the support of the individuals. Someone else? Yes, Anna, please. Yeah, I would just like to, to stress the importance of uh, friendship networking as well. Mm -hmm. So the uh, French friends, family, and how not only as role models, but as support and uh, giving you strength, even without uh, sometimes being there in person, but with the... Uh, uh, a word or a small gesture like uh, bringing you food when you cannot cook for yourself because you are too <laughs> overwhelmed with uh, with work and uh, stressing around uh, and uh, being able to um, uh, how can I say uh, being open to change all the time uh, not yes. being too it's very important to uh, follow the dreams and also be well sure about uh, what uh, you want in life and what you want for for your career for your work, but uh, also be open to the possibility of uh, just turning, making a U-turn and then going around in a roundabout and. Uh, uh, moving forwards in a different path without uh, regrets and just with uh, this will to learn more and uh, do something good in life. It's flexible. Uh, yes. How I see resilience as well. Yes. I was hoping that the students shared more their their views. But they are silent. <laughs> but they are silent. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. So, By the way, Ioana was a student. I'm a student every day of my Ioana. life. Okay. <laughs> Ioana, we cannot hear you. Ioana? Ne, se mena milate. Yes. Uh, sorry, yes. to me. Yes. You would like also to add something, or? Uh, no, to my case, uh, as the others say, 
I need one people to believe uh, to me, not my parents or uh, my sister. I need a teacher because the point was the exams to believe to me. And I believe to myself also more and achieve that they, that I wanted. It's very important someone to believe in you to the right, exactly to the right time when you need it. And from all the bad things, we take something good. We see something new and good for us. Uh, that's I want to say. Thanks. Nice. I also have prepared something about the university level. You will see it at the end of the presentations if you, if you would like to wait for us. So I think I can go on with the presentations if you agree. Eh? I'll try to share the screen again. Remember, but I can only see my presentation. So if you would like to ask something or whatever, just uh, open your microphone and uh, go on, ask it, okay? So let's, uh, let's try to define resilience. Uh, unfortunately, we have no consensus of a definition of resilience. Uh, it has been a very hard incoming, not only uh, because its discipline has a different focus. Uh, psychologists, for example, uh, ex uh, uh, work with individuals exposed uh, at uh, adverse, traumatic or stressful situations able to adapt. Economics uh, work uh, with uh, economy to withstand or recover from the effects of economic shocks. And engineering, as we have a lot of them in our group, work with stability, resistance, and uh, speed of return. Uh, the problem is that we need the definitions because uh, according to a definition, we are uh, ensured that we all talk about the same thing and we all research it in a, a harmony way. Um, the term resilience has uh, at least to some extent become an empty word, word that uh, can be filled with almost any meaning because someone referred to resilience as something uh, that has to come only with individuals. Others refer to it as a, in a more holistic sense. Some other refers to resilience as a competencies or a capacity, other as a procedure, other as an outcome, while either other refers uh, to resilience as a positive functioning in the face of adversity. And uh, all those um, multitude of meanings uh, has led to severe criticism about the validity of the resilience theory. And unfortunately, this is also true until now, because this is a review that was published uh, the previous year. And um, we can see uh, in uh, the vast majority of the studies, uh, the term resilience is without clear conceptualization or measurements. And this is not only the case as um, also in this study, uh, also, uh, in this study that uh, also is a systematic review, uh, data resources from three health-related databases included 100 articles in the final data analysis, identified a number of markers of resilience, but there is no, they, they didn't um, result to a definition of resilience. So we have um, no universal uh, definition. But we have another of uh, themes, common themes, as adaptation and adjustment uh, is, uh, uh, very, uh, is very um, familiar, uh, using uh, instead of uh, resilience, dynamic process, ordinary magic, and mental, uh, uh, mental health. And um, as for, we will go a little bit back, just to give you a me. Um, a history of the resilience definition. Resilience has its roots in the study of adversity and an interest in how adverse life experiences impact harmfully on people. The great uh, Antonovsky has referred to this as a pathogenic focus, meaning a focus on the origins of illness. And uh, it is true that uh, the researchers, uh, the initial researchers work in resilience began with work on vulnerability. And um, uh, as these are very, um, as, as these are early stage of risk, uh, risk demonstrated, the vulnerability contributes to later negative outcomes. They can, uh, we have to declare what is vulnerability and what, what are the outcomes. 
The vulnerability included a range of factors, including family history of mental health, challenges in the prenatal and or prenatal period, problems in the family environment and problems in the broader, in the broader social environment. And at the same time, the outcomes were frequently uh, focused as the main of them were psychologists and uh, psychiatrists on mental health until Werner uh, came and put a more inclusive, um, uh, a more inclusive dimensions of the outcomes and uh, added physical, social, and intellectual development. So, um, Early researchers noticed that the relations between vulnerability and negative outcome was not universal. While many have negative outcomes in response to vulnerability, but not all of them, and and the uh, um, and some of them deep and recover, others slow little or no deterioration in functioning, and still others appear to achieve higher levels of adaptation than they had before. So uh, that uh, gave the researchers uh, the opportunity to come more near to a frequent definition of resilience that has to do resilient as an outcome. And according to this, resilient as an outcome, we can uh, define it as a stable trajectory of healthy functioning after highly adverse event, or individuals who adapt to uh, extraordinary circumstances achieving positive and unexpected outcomes in the face of adversity. But um, this was not very satisfying for the researchers that they start to asking why and keep asking why, because uh, they noticed, they recognized that there were differences in the outcomes in the face of adversity. And here is a Donovsky uh, salutogenesis. I hope that you already know the term. Uh, that uh, uh, try to, uh, to to take the focus of the illness and put it in the health or the fixed psychological functioning, and uh, started to uh, to work with a number of assets for health and well-being. This is an umbrella. Uh, under the umbrella, we have a number of um, a number of uh, um, a positive. Um, assets for health and well-being. And uh, also uh, we have the names of the main researchers of the, of the, of the assets. So salutogenesis is the origins of health that focus uh, on factors that support health and well-being rather on uh, focusing on uh, the cause of the disease. And uh, the main uh, question uh, Antonovsky posed is, how can this person be helped to move toward greater health? So in this way of thinking about resilience, we transfer uh, the definition from the outcome, resilience and outcome to resilient as a process. And, we, and they notice, the researchers notice that, the, that there, are, there are some other factors that fall between adversity and the negative outcomes and they start working on those processes in a more detailed way. Uh, as a process, resilience uh, definitions included the capacity to rebound from adversity and the process of adjusting well to significant adversity. Let's, hear, let's see here uh, the, the figure. Uh, what we can see? We can see three different things. We see three components that, it's, that they are very, very important when we're talking about resilience. We cannot talk resilience if we're not referring to adversity, mediating processes, and better than expected outcomes. So the outcome definitions you can see here of resilience declares the observations only of positive outcomes. And this only observ observations does not give us a clue about uh, an explanation how a person or a system managed to have better than expected outcomes. Resilience as a process here leads an outcome and the central focus must be in the mediating processes here. So we will uh, talk about, uh, before we talk about these mediating processes, I would like also to say a little bit about the adversity and the outcomes, 
because those are also um, terms that they are uh, social constructed it might vary by context uh, by one context to another so please give attention to what uh, the people uh, mean by adversity or by outcome so uh, let's talk about a little bit about adversity adversity has two categories chronic and acute chronic adversity extends over a greater period of time and may have a perceived impact on, on the person's life. And this chronic adversity, we can divide it in two more categories. Distal onset is a chronic adversity, has no longer starting point within the experience of the pensions and may include, for example, poverty or family violence. Some, uh, some, of, us, some of us may born in an environment uh, from the very uh, uh, first minute of our life. So we, we have no background without it. And then it's a proximal onset. It's chronic adversity that has defined has a defined starting point in the experience of the person, continues a significant period of time and may impact numerous aspects of life. And unfortunately, here we're talking about war and natural disasters. Beyond the chronic, we have the acute adversity that has, defined, has also a defined static point, a relative brief durations, and maybe a limited, a limited impact on the whole life. Uh, and there we can refer to an accident and or an assault. So we can see that the, adversity, that the adversities are greatly different and we cannot put them all in one place. Um, also, we can hear a lot of uh, bounce banker as a term. And um, when we're referring to this bounce bank, uh, we have to think that uh, we have to have a previous pre trauma level of functioning. So this is bounce back is only for acute and proximal onset chronic diverse adversities. While this and onset and chronic does not since there is no before. On the other hand, uh, chronic adversity resilience um, involves coping in the face of the adversity while it is going. So we have to be brave to face it while it is ongoing. And resilience to acute uh, adversity involves recovering in the wake of the adversity after that uh, event has ended. Uh, as for the outcomes, we also have to be very uh, specific about what we're talking about the outcomes of the uh, of the outcomes of uh, resilience. Uh, we should avoid to be simplistic. We should avoid dividing the word uh, in either resilient or, or not resilient. We have to be very specific about what are the outcomes we're talking about. And the most important is uh, we have to give the space for the participants of the, the, themselves, excuse me, to determine what is the most important for them. So we don't have black and white, we don't have good or bad, but we have um, we have to leave the participants the space uh, and to express uh, a very uh, common uh, expression is everything went well, went better than expected is something that we use really uh, in these situations. And I have already wrote it here. So. Uh, we have talked about adversity, we have talked about the outcomes, we have, talk, we have talked that both of them are social constructed terms, so we have to be careful from culture and um, from place to place, but also from, uh, from time to time. And we have to stay at the heart of the resilient research. Here it is the heart of the resilience, this is the mediating processes, and this is also referred, uh, this is also referred as a protective resources, which enable people to achieve better than expected outcomes in the face uh, or wake of adversity. The initial research on resilience was focused in a defining individual uh, factor. So we have hardness, sense of coherence, self-efficacy. More recently, we have greed. And um, even more recently, we have intelligence, problem uh, solving skills, emotional regulations, motivations, faith and hope. And this is um, uh, this is why this is the the individual the the, the individualized resilience uh, was uh, is the one of the main criticism that has um, has been done because 
uh, it is implies that the individual is responsible for improving her or his context, while little or no support from the state is what already Nicoletta uh, had told us. So is someone here a superhero? So we're not looking for superheroes, as you can understand, only Costas is a superhero here. Um, individuals, though, are, um, are not responsible for dealing the collective challenges of the planet or the environment. Those collect collective challenges should be dealt by the collective structures, such as the state. And um, what do you think? Is resilience a personal trait? Is someone that we would like to ask? Do you believe that uh, resilience is a personal trait? Can I answer? Is, yes, of course, Costas. I cannot see anyone. That's why I'm 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 only listening to you. In my opinion, and if I understand, if I'm understanding well, you know the meaning of the word trait. I think it's not. I mean, it's in my opinion. I think that you can work out, and even if you are not resilient, as any other soft skill, you can develop it. I, and, uh, and what you need to do is like to realize the situation that you are. Since you are going to realize the situation you are, you are working on your weaknesses and you can go and progress. This is, you know, what, Perfect. Uh, this Perfect. is my answer. Yeah. Thank you. And is someone just, else wanted to add? Yeah, I completely agree with Costas, uh, but I'd like to add that it's uh, uh, also something that it's harder to be worked out more for some uh, people than uh, for other people, right? And uh, uh, it's not, uh, of course, as far as I see it, uh, the, uh, directly related to your uh, character or your personality, uh, but um, if you already have these strengths to cope with the obstacles and learn out of them, it is easier to learn strategies to be resilient and prone to, to overcome and be open to, to get to support and help as well. So it's probably a combination of, of both. Okay, but Anna, thank you. Thank you. Leo, uh... Um, Nicoleta Ratzica has raised her hand. Thank you, Nicoleta. Yes, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, it is a personal trait, but uh, I may say that uh, maybe a person uh, expressed a lot of resilience during his life, but uh, it's not uh, all the time the same. Some things may be very, uh, can be very resilient, and uh, in some other uh, Phases of his life uh, can be not. Of course, totally agree. Thank you. So, of course, resilience is not, is not a personal trait. Uh, we live in a world of uh, complexity, and we need uh, the support of the broad social, social uh, systems for sure. Uh, and this is also uh, stated from the early beginning of the resilient research. Uh, resilience uh, emphasized in the centrality of the relationships. And uh, from the very beginning, um, large studies have been uh, constant in showing the importance of the early caregiving, for example, relationships for developmental uh, outcomes through, through childhood to the ones uh, who reach mid, middle, middle life and showed better than expected outcomes because those people relied on supportive networks of the family and the community. And um, relationships is, is, a, is, a, is a very important mediating factor, is a protective factor to face and wake of, uh, or wake of adversity, is a part of what we call the social environment. And um, we work um, in the social sciences and especially in social work, we work with resilience in, uh, uh, is, as we draw here, the person in the environment. And then that means uh, that um, the person um, has to interact with all the different systems that the, this person uh, belongs to. So resilience processes lie not just in the individual or the environment, but it mainly relies in the way of those systems interact among themselves, among each other. 
And we have uh, here social ecologists, uh, Ungas go uh, a step further and also added uh, beyond the family relation to the social structures that we can see here, which is uh, generally speaking, uh, the general social, economic, cultural and environmental conditions. Add also culture in the uh, in this um, in this uh, model in this um, social ecology social ecology model, and uh, uh, as a result, resilient resilience building interventions focus not only to individuals but on the social environments of those, and uh, this came as the fourth wave of resilient research that um, this was expanded. And uh, we have the focus on multi-level dynamics and the many and the many processes linking genes, ne neurobiological adaptation, brain development, behavior, and context at multi-level, individual, social and community networks, and general socioeconomic and cultural environments. So part of the resilience field is moving towards super micro, and the other is moving super uh, at the critical macro. So I'm not a medical uh, doctor, so I'm not a, bio a biologist, so I will not go to touch at all uh, the super macro level, but I will stay to the critical macro. And uh, here comes uh, Borders' work with young people from the poor community in Australia, raises the, the, the notion of resistance within the resilience th theory. And resistance is an exercise of the agency of the people in adverse social context uh, by creating identity, by changing the odds, by introduce social justice, by seek to reduce or eliminate the vulnerability. And uh, I came here back again to this uh, figure because uh, according to how that I have already told you, uh, the mediating processes of resilience are targeted not to accommodating the adversity, but at challenging the adversity. They go further. So for those of us who are, who are not superhero, I think we should start looking at the macro level, at the community level of where people live, interact, love, fight every day. And um, unfortunately, uh, we live um, in a period with uh, great challenges. We have war inside Europe. We have pandemic and COVID-19. We have uh, economic downturn. We have climate change, and of course, we have peak oil means. And uh, this is today's facts, ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine inside Europe. We have a student also from Ukraine with us today. Uh, but this is not only the case. Unfortunately, we have a conflict over resources. We, we will not forget Iraq or Israel or Palestine. Um, we have COVID-19. Uh, we have a, a health, uh, a public health crisis that uh, lasted longer than we all, all expected and uh, give us, um, ask a lot from all of us. And uh, here is a, one important central question is how do we finally uh, try to uh, overcome all those um, uh, crises that uh, COVID-19 brought to our communities? At the same time, we have climate change uh, changes climate, uh, changing our climate is a way that we will make it more difficult for people, for plants, for animals, for everybody in, the, in this planet. And uh, a number of uh, spices will be uh, ex extinct uh, by 2050. And a lot of human populations are moving, not only from climate change, but, but also for these uh, reasons. Uh, I think I don't have to take uh, to, to talk about uh, peak oil a lot. Uh, our economy was become dependent on cheap on energy from oil. Oil had been an amazing chip because now it is not, as you can only uh, experience uh, when you're going with your car uh, to fill it uh, with uh, gas or, or oil. Um, and uh, it, uh, it has been an amazing chip, but it's not anymore. It has caused a number of problems. Uh, we have lack of water, lack of food, and not only uh, this is not a, an issue that uh, has to do with uh, Africa or Asia. Uh, a lot of uh, parts of the planet, um, even in US and in Europe, we have lack of water and food in uh, some uh, cases. We have strained ecosystems. Uh, we have plants and animals that they, they're not able to adapt 
to this uh, quickly enough in changing climate uh, situations. We have droughts and floods. We have heat waves. Um, a study of uh, at nine California countries found that uh, in every uh, 10 degrees of Fahrenheit increase in temperature, that uh, will give us a 2.6% increase in cardiovascular de de deaths. And, and of course, not, a, not all populations are in the same risk because uh, the risk for African-Americans was, was measured as higher. We also have wildfires, we have sea level rise, we have everything. So uh, I think it's, uh, it, it is time to, to move toward critical macro uh, resilience. And uh, uh, I have to notice here that uh, communities can provide resources and supportive set structures that can promote resilience of the individuals. The resilience of the community will be determined by the resilience of the individuals. This has to be in mind. Um, maybe it's time to look about uh, to look our homes. Uh, homes are our communities, our neighborhoods, our physical house, and also by our built environments. But on, not only that, because communities are not only buildings. Uh, communities are the collection of the individuals that do not exist in isolation. Uh, I would like you. Uh, to take a, a small break with a small video now. Uh, I hope to summarize uh, in this small video what, I've, uh, what I have already told you. Any thoughts, comments, ideas, feelings? Feelings, thinking positive. <laughs> Collectively, <laughs> is the right word. <laughs> yes, of course, feeling positively. So if you would, if you would uh, like me to continue, I can do it. Uh, 
if someone also would like to add something no i'm going on ah, sorry 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 so um in the sense of the community uh is is drawn from the people who inhabit in their community and we interact with their environment with a number of ways either participating in the local governments uh study in the local university or going to the local uh, primary uh, school that all gives the community a resilience and um, of course uh, communities are uh, very complex entities and uh, we have to keep this in mind but resilience exists throughout the life of the community and adaptation can occur either in a response to or in a dissipation to the crisis in any case any any adaptation must improve the community in a number of ways and resilience should be defined in a manner that the, and enables useful predictions to be made about the community ability to recover from adversity. And what makes community resilience? Um, the connected communities are the resilient communities. And uh, we have a very uh, we have a very a nice example about uh, the connected uh, communities. Uh, we discuss it in another course of the community development course. And community uh, resilience is a community's ability to withdraw and recover from the hard time. There is no one that can do the job for you. It is a hard work of creating resilience. It is up to you. The experts or uh, other professionals are, that they are near you um, can say um, what has to be done in the community. but the main role and the main responsibility belongs to the citizens themselves. And uh, what makes community resilience? Uh, according to the criteria, you will see that it is not an easy uh, task. It's about equity, quality, uh, sustainability and ownerships. And what we mean about equity, uh, uh, with equity, we mean that uh, all members uh, can adequately uh, meet all their needs with no um, the discrimination. Uh, um, quality uh, it, it refers to the basic uh, good and uh, services we rely, uh, that we rely uh, and we have them in a good quality, for example, water um, or food. And sustainability uh, is also um, the use of the services and the, and the goods in, the, in a way that increase their ability uh, to uh, keep producing those uh, resources. And finally, ownership. Ownership uh, is uh, the community uh, selectively and securely owns uh, essential resources, as for example, is uh, water. As you can um, everybody, as you can everybody think, uh, those are uh, criteria but to evaluate resilience of how a community meets its basic needs, but they are very hard criteria to accomplish. And uh, how to build resilience? Uh, resilience um, in the community level uh, demands um, intervention that should, should attend uh, to specific local hazards, but a multi-hazard approach can enhance resilience to a broader, to a broad array uh, of potential adversities. And um, no matter if we're looking, if we're trying to uh, confront one strength or at the local context, it is better to work to work at the multi-hazard approach uh, and work with the uh, interventions at uh, not a specific hazard but a multi-hazard uh, approach. Uh, as for the community assessment, um, community members, organizations generally know a lot of their locality. Uh, it is very important to and very useful to understand the local context of the dynamics um, that might support uh, or hinder disaster resilience. So when we're talking about community assessment, we also have to give uh, the first role also to the community members to express uh, their um, their um, um, their hidden uh, disaster resilience dynamics and etc. Because they have uh, more knowledge that uh, the researchers that they will come in the community for uh, a number of dates and then will leave them the community. Uh, a very important uh, to build the community resilience is also the community engagement. 
reflect, uh, it must reflect to the composition of uh, the community. Uh, do not forget uh, to add uh, uh, marginalized individuals and groups. Uh, everybody has um, a very uh, important uh, role and responsibility to support the community structures and operations, and they will give you uh, new insight and energy to the community development. Uh, you have to be inclusive. Uh, bioethical principles establish obligations for professional organizations uh, and, and organizations to keep um, research within, with uh, human subjects um, in a way that they respect uh, uh, the, uh, the um, respect the procedures uh, in the research and follow the principles of autonomy uh, and uh, justice and etc. And uh, finally, we have to focus on both assets and needs. Uh, this is a, a, a new approach uh, in community development. Asset-based approaches may provide a viable alternative to the traditional needs-driven uh, approaches. Uh, the old one uh, was encouraging resilience on services and resources and uh, uh, use uh, the community members uh, only as a consumers. Here, when we use uh, both uh, assets and needs at the same time, it's like we have one coin with two sides, with the, the two sides of one coin, and um, we give uh, the uh, community uh, the strength, the capacity, and the skills uh, to organize better uh, and to combine assets uh, with their uh, specific needs uh, in order to resolve the problems. Uh, we also have skilled, skill developments. Uh, we have already talked about uh, examples about leadership, team building, communication, and risk management skills are important elements uh, for um, uh, for resilience. Uh, but uh, not forget uh, to that the individuals need to be uh, 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 to perform uh, better responding than the reacting than reacting. They have to be. Um, they have to uh, to have capacities uh, for that. Uh, they have to take a moment to reflect, to go a back, to, to to go a step back and see the reality, and then uh, try to uh, to see what are the um, the reality they have to confront with. Um, they have to see their resources and manage their boundaries as well as their as their time and make choices moment to moment. They have to recharge. Individuals need to learn uh, that green moments, uh, the moments that we reload our batteries or give the times that they might not expect it. Uh, and also we need to reframe to see uh, the situation with a different, uh, with new eyes from a new scope. And uh, action for resilience, uh, local governments, but also community groups wonder, is resilience just a buzzword or we can create action on it or an impact our field. And uh, also higher education is asking the same time. And I choose this uh, to focus on the higher education as we all belong in uh, a way at the university. Um, at the uni university staff work alongside students as they learn how to bounce back from a failure, disappointment, loss, rejection, etc., and most of your and many of your um, and uh, many of your experiences uh, related to this uh, uh, to this issue, uh, students struggle, and many universities are creating resources to empower and equip them to be, become resilient. And those are examples that we have to follow. Those are seven college 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 and universities. Excuse me. Uh, so. Uh, so just how incredible and meaningful network preparing students to succeed. And um, below you can read more if you would like to. Uh, for example, I took uh, a pen uh, resilience program that worked with both students and staff with a number of actions in order to, uh, to fit uh, the needs, the goals, and uh, the culture of the organization to include, to be inclusive, include all of them uh, in uh, a number of um, activities. We have Harvard. Harvard uh, works a program uh, about the success failure project in their campus, uh, which explores successes, failures, and resilience. 
and um, give the opportunity uh, to some of the faculty, dean, staff, and others um, to talk about rejections and so on, the rejections that they have received uh, in order to uh, to give inspiration to their students, just to, to keep working, to keep swimming as Nemo. Yes, and the picture trying to uh, motivate uh, his um, partner. And this is a number of community resilient interventions. If you would like some of you to read more about uh, others, um, uni uh, other universities' uh, works. So uh, the road for resilience, this is a very hard uh, road. Um, resilience, of course, is not a special tra a trait. It's, um, uh, it's not that uh, people are resilient or are not. We don't have uh, such a big categories. Uh, it includes behaviors, thoughts, actions that we can learn and develop uh, in any one of us. So make connections. This is the first uh, uh, tip uh, for the road to resilience. Make connections, good connections with close friends and families and other important people in your lives. Avoid seeing crisis as a non-win problems. We, we can find solutions in almost every problem. Accept the change is part of living. We have seen it from uh, the very beginning of the presentation. Uh, move forward your goals. Take key critical decisions. Look for opportunities for self-discovery. Create a positive view of yourself. Keep things even painfully in a broader content and perspective. Maintain a hopeful outlook, what you want rather worrying what you fear. And the most important, take care of yourself. So the road to resilience, learning from the past, focusing on, on past experiences and resources that can help you learn about what strategies for building resilience might work for you particularly. Thank you so much for your patience with my English. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cleo, for this excellent presentation and discussion with all of us. Um, I don't know if there is a time or we have some questions from the audience to uh, I can see that uh, Nicoleta Ratzka has raised her hand. The floor is yours. No, no. Ah, My mistake, mistake. It was first. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Uh, any yeah. comments? Ah, I think that, you know, there is a question from yeah. Joanna. Joanna, the floor is yours. Uh, yes. Uh, I want to say that uh, I understand that every one of us is a very important part for, for the community. And if we don't give to our community, we can't take back. And if we don't have the ability as community to recover from the hard times, economical crisis, social crisis, we can't give to the people out of our community. And time to time, we'll be in a very bad conditions, condition ourselves. So the community needs to be strong and we need to fight and support the others. Uh, thank you very much for these presentations. I take a lot of uh, good uh, things from that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yona. Excellent. Let's talk here. This is a the best message. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Excellent. Oh, I thank you. Um, good. Because I have a, a, a task and assignment for the students. I don't know. I, will, I, I, think uh, that, it I mean, if you are able to stop sharing your screen, because now I can see myself, you know, twice. It's not the best. <laughs> it's not the best thing. I see myself three times. <laughs> I think that I have I have stopped. No. No. Now. Now it's no. So, any other question, comment to Cleo? Uh, thank you. Uh, I can see. Thanks, Cleo. Thanks. Okay, sorry, I was not active today. Yanis, you should be more active. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that we have discussed everything, you know, even though that you know usually I have questions. No, I don't have. Thank you. Something is right, but the track is, but I cannot read without my glasses. No, no, I, I'm reading. Cleo, thank you for your presentation. My mind, how good. Uh, 
Bye. Thank yeah, you I think very that, much. You, know, you gave me an idea, to be honest, Cleo. And I think that, you know, I made the oh. comment and I will do this now that, you know, I have made my... About mind. the university, I'm sure, about the university. Yeah, I mean, about the university and what Harvard is doing, the Resilience Consortium, Harvard. You know, and this is very important, eh? Harvard, that they have the best minds, the, the most talented student, but also anyone can be as much talented as you wish. But, you know, what they are doing, the success failure project is the whole story. Look, the success failure, you know. So what I'm telling to my students, you know, to fail is the first step to success, all right? Yes. And to everyone, not only to the students, because as uh, Anna has mentioned, we are students. Our profession is to be students every day. Actually, we are more students than the students ourselves. Exactly. And uh, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to propose this to become as a part, a, as one of the initiatives and actions of the International Relations Office, but also one of the actions of the Athena, because uh, if Athena European universities be able to follow the pathway of what Harvard is doing in order to help the students, but also, you know, help the teachers, because if the students, they are more, uh, they can withstand and they can be more comfortable with failure. I don't like the word failure, like the success. Let's say the success. Uh, it will be much better for us as the teachers because we are, we are getting the motivation from them. So they are more active, they are there, they are asking, they, they push us to do our job much better. So I will try to follow, I will find, you know, the information through the internet, what they are doing. And I think that, you know, it's going to be a very nice idea and action for the wow. Iranian <laughs> University and also for the Athena. Uh, so thank you very much. This is a very good, you know, point, and, you know, very good service for the students. If the students they will follow, but it's up to us to... Yes. Failure is the final stage. Maybe the final stage of success. Uh, I think it is the first stage. Failure is the final stage. You can say that it is uh, better to confront any difficulties mm -hmm. or to overcome difficulties, not to uh, to have a failure. Yeah, but, but you should be. Yes, you should be able to to do. I mean, you should develop the way of thinking how to, to deal with any challenge. Oh, okay. Susan Gagnon. <laughs> super <laughs> Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Let Hello, me introduce everyone. you, Super Susan. All Thank right? you so much for this interesting presentation. And unfortunately, I did not see the entire thing, but I caught the second half and great, great information. It will and be I was YouTube. YouTube, yeah, excellent. So I can see the first part. Um, and what I was what just was going to add to this uh, slight debate you were having is um, we can look at them as challenges, obstacles. Exactly. And yeah. challenges and obstacles are the things that teach us the most and uh, overcoming finding ways to overcome obstacles is how we really develop uh, self esteem and resilience. Mm -hmm. So, meaning that the obstacles need to be there in some way. They are there, and it's all uh, we all we all have them, and it's how we go about confronting them. Mm -hmm. And the obstacle can be a mistake that we've made. It can be, uh, well, like we were saying, perhaps even a failure. Sometimes uh, something that really burns, but it that is actually what gives us the the muscle. <laughs> Mm, if I could just add that, that's really very, very important because something that happens a little bit in the West is um, a lot of parents, they try to move all the obstacles out of the way. And um, I'm not sure, maybe I'm repeating something that was already said during the presentation. No, no, but, but it's true, it's true. It's true. It made me think of that. That's a big problem. And um, instead, our young people, um, let's say they are facing a lot of challenge. We are all facing a lot of challenges. And I think... Um, in order for them to even get excited about uh, looking for uh, ways of, of uh, perhaps overcoming some obstacles, is um, it's important for them to encounter them and be encouraged. Mm -hmm. so, so I would like to ask now something. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would like to ask Leo, since, since she's a mother, you know, I don't have kids, so I cannot say anything. But do you think, Cleo, that the way that we grow up our kids in Greece, and this is the culture of the South, Mediterranean areas, like we are so protective to the family members, let's say, so protective, yes. like to avoid them to be exposed in difficulties in, you know, in any, you know, situation is a, is the good way. Do we train the resilience of our family members? Yes or no? 
the answer is something somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Negotiation skills now. No one wins. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of skills, that's true. That's true. I mean, <laughs> on, on, it's something in the middle. We are protecting them a lot. That's true. And Suzanne has, uh, has uh, a good point there. But uh, we cannot give them, um, we will give them uh, responsibilities uh, in a way they can afford them step by step. Yes, on the one hand, uh, having a very um, feeling protected at the right time in your life, feeling that uh, there is there are adults around you who are solid, this yeah. then enables you someday to be able to become that and to give it to someone else. So it's uh, the way I see it in, in, in the when you were talking about in Southern Europe, because I'm, I'm obviously uh, speaking to you from Italy. But uh, uh, for younger children, it's a wonderful thing in a lot of ways. But it's it's we have to sort of pull back on those protections. Uh, and our, and if we're paying attention to the young people, they'll let us know when they're ready. You know, they they start pushing back, they argue, they rebel. This is all good stuff. <laughs> no, it's giving them the tools to move on their own and not doing things for them. For them. I was thinking ancient Sparta and ancient Greece when I was asking this question. And like, what's That's the best way to... No, no, this is not the way. This is not the way. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have kids, so... <laughs> All right. It's hard to, to, it's hard to give the tools. <laughs> yeah. But that's, the, that's how it must be. Anyhow, do we have any other questions from the audience? All right, if this is the case. Thank you okay. so much. I would like to thank, you know, Clio, I would like to thank all of you. We are going to be back on the on the second of uh, on the second of May, since we have Eastern now, you know, in for Catholics and Orthodox in mm -hmm. two weeks that are coming. So thank you very much. Everything will be uploaded into the Moodle. And also, you know, I'm going to send the link of the YouTube channel in order to follow again the excellent talk and presentation and discussions by Clio. Thank you, Cleo. Thank all of you. Take care, be safe, and see you on the 2nd of May with a talk about emotional intelligence. Bye. Second, it's Bye -bye. not second, it's the 9th of May. I think that you have changed with the with Tatiana, no? Or is the opposite? Anyhow. It's your, yeah. All right. okay. We will be back on the 2nd of May. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I have course at this particular day that I cannot attend. I'm really sorry that I cannot attend. Actually, yes, it's yeah. like, you know, they have trans they have moved the bank holiday on the 2nd of May. All right, so I should, yeah. should check this because it's going to be a bank yeah. holiday all over the Europe about... All right, I will... I will check it. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 B